So, welcome to the Beginner Boost. It's day zero. We count from zero, obviously. We're going to learn some C here. Actually, the, the C book, the one of the Gain C book, actually, chapter zero has become a cultural thing for we coders and technologists to start with the number zero. Um, you know, welcome from all over. We have people from all over the world. We were talking about, you know, Brazil. People are here at 2 a.m. I can't believe it. We talked about, we talked briefly about uh, when to come and how to get the content. So I'm going to briefly recap all of that in a really quick video, the logistics. I'm going to keep the logistics down to 10 or 15 minutes about how this is all going to work and where you can get your information, blah, blah, blah. So put your ears on. I'm going to talk fast. So the first thing is that every day from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time, which is down here, EDT currently uh, is when the live sessions for the boost will be. I call them like live recording studio. If you want to be in the studio audience, uh, you can be here and and participate. But but I got to tell you right now, the fundamental focus of the beginner boost is to create YouTube videos that are consistent and then in an order that can be outlined so that people on YouTube can come at it whenever they want to. Which brings me to the next point. Every single Twitch VOD is kept for 60 days as is. So I start the VOD about 15 minutes before the boost starts. You can come on in and talk and, you know, shoot the breeze with the other people in the community. And then, and then you know, we're going to be recording sessions during uh, during that two hours. And not all of the time is going to be recording. Some of it's going to be just talk. So if you want to see kind of like the outtakes and, you know, the in-between conversations, stuff like that, then the VOD is the only place that that will be saved and that will be lost after 60 days. The important topics, however, will be recorded with a title and with never more than 25 minutes each. And they will be, whenever the tomato down here, this is a Pomodoro, uh, time, Pomodoro timer, timer. We're using the Pomodoro timer. I talked about changing this to a camera, but the tomato is cuter. So we're going to keep it that, and that's going to tell us that you're live. So anything that you say in the live studio audience will most likely appear on the screen and it will definitely appear in the VOD. So just know that, right? Just, you know, have good manners and stuff like that. I'm trusting everybody here. And inevitably we have one or two, you know, trolls in there or something like that. That's fine too. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with testing it. Take your moment right here to test it and type everything you want. If I actually, uh, if, if I'm at a point where the, the chat's going to be distracting, I'll just turn it off and, and I'll just do this. I'll just do something like this and put the fish on or something. And, you know, and I can turn you guys off and you guys can still chat in the background. So a couple little logistics about that. Uh, people on Twitch have come to appreciate the use of exclamation point commands in the chat. I don't like them. I don't use them. I think they distract from the chat. But having said that, you can, you go ahead and try it right now, you can use an exclamation point to as sort of a back channel. So if you are in the studio audience and you want to ask questions and you don't want them to appear on the screen and you don't, you know, maybe or anything like that, you can type anything with an exclamation point and, and, and after that, you can type whatever you want after that and everybody else will see it. Uh, there's no, there's never going to be a bot command that responds to that. I, I don't like them. But if you want to use that as a means of communicating, you know, like, is that a piece of lettuce in Mr. Rob's teeth? Should we tell him about it? You know, that kind of stuff, <laughs> whatever you want, you know, but that just keep in mind that that, that is not going to be, yeah, see, I see people just in stuff right here, test, boost, secret message, uh, cock -a -poo -poo. <laughs> I will not reveal who you were who said that. That's funny. Uh, hopes there will be Python and Django. Yeah. So now I can still see him. So it's important you know that I, I won't see him right away, but I have another monitor so I can see what you guys are saying. Um, if actually I, sometimes if you want to send me a message that you don't want to appear in the YouTube chat, that's another way to do that. So if you want to secretly tell me something like, dude you know <laughs> whatever you can't do backslash now uh -uh. And, and you can't you can't run code people have tried to run code on the system too they've tried to execute shell commands on my system which i may actually enable sometime i actually think it would be really fun to enable a shell command you know to, to do that all right my pomo my pomo timer is ticking down so we got to keep it going on so rest of the logistics here so i think i covered most everything logistics let's review so seven to nine every day no matter what time uh, the entire VODs are safe for 60 days. Uh, the highlighted videos, which I didn't talk about, will be uh, the, the, the highlighted videos are the ones that are going that I'm making like right now. And they are very succinct and to the point, hopefully. And uh, you can just watch one of those during a break at lunch. 
uh, or, you know, whatever. You can just, you can take take a break and watch that. The, the format's always going to be the same. Uh, I've decided to go with this Groovebox background uh, with, you know, the sort of the titles up here. I'll probably be, always be wearing the same black shirt because I'm going to be interchanging videos all the time. Uh, have I, like, no kidding. I actually have like nine of these Hanes black shirts on. And so that I can, you know, sort of like not trimming my beard the same way. It'll, as far as you'll know, it'll be the same guy all in different places. Uh, because we're going to be chopping up lots of different videos and reorganizing them. Uh, there, okay, so that brings me to the next thing. So, do you guys have any questions about that so far? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, they're making comments about some of my other videos, and my my they're giving me a hard time. That's okay. So, the next thing, let's let's move on then. Oh, of course, my wife's going to make a smoothie right now. Of course, she is. <laughs> Cheers, honey. I love her to death. You should see the hat she just made. Okay. So, uh, I know. I want a smoothie, too. Maybe she'll bring me one. Can you hear it? Can you hear her smoothie? Can you <laughs> Tell me you can hear it. I mean, she, she hasn't made a smoothie all day. She just had to make a smoothie like, right now. <laughs> oh, I love her so much. Yeah, day zero, smoothie noise. <laughs> you, if, if I get a little bit of the smoothie, I, all things are forgiven. She almost gave me her hat, too. I was like, this hat is cool, and she almost gave it to me. I have a fair... I do... There's a fair amount of distraction. I'll probably still stay in the video, but just to give you an idea, that would be, yeah, Mrs. Rob, RWX wife. She's in there. Now, normally... Normally, I would cut this out, but some of you don't know me, so this is a part of normal here. If we're going to be distracted a little bit. Uh, Tony Jupiter. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about. Now you're talking about stuff I'm doing at work. I'm actually working on Jupiter Hub at work. So, see, this would be a place for me to pause the video right now, but I'm not going to because I'm gonna let you just take in the distraction. <laughs> let people trickle in. Uh, thanks for the sub, by the way. Uh, another thing, another logistics thing. I, I appreciate the subs and the follows, but I normally don't call people out on it because I personally don't like to be called out when I follow somebody. I don't like to see the big zombie and have everybody talk to me right away. I kind of like to sneak in, and I, I realize that some people want to be recognized and some people don't, and those who don't want to be recognized, I, 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 I tend to, to, to not say anything. So that's what's up there. Let's let's go on. So if you want to know, this is this is the main most important site for you to go to. Obviously, Twitch is important, uh, but the most important site, and you can't really see it from there, is github.com slash rwx rob slash boost. This is GitHub. Uh, some of you may remember last year we had rwx.gg and, and I removed all the links from here. Uh, this is still sort of a landing spot, but uh, it is not being, we're not using this because it's just too much work to change all the web content. Uh, thank you for the link, Dex. Uh, if you do go to the rwx.gg and you click on boost though, it will, it will redirect you here in case that's where you're, where you're going. Uh, I have to mention that because last year's boost content is still there. Uh, and you know, you can go through it. It's on GitLab, I think still, we're on GitHub now, but, but I, I want to be really clear here. The main source of content for this entire boost is going to be on uh, or is going to be on GitHub, and it's going to be only on GitHub. And the main justification for that, uh, and we'll talk about it a little bit more down here. But um, the main justification for that is because I can make immediate changes uh, granularly, and they will they will show. Uh, you can also follow me uh, if you you would give me a watch if you if you want to. Um, oops, that needs to be refreshed. Uh, if you if you want to give me a watch or a star, that'll help you. If you actually if you have this open in Edge or Chrome, uh, it will actually notify you of a change. You'll get like a system notification if you choose to. Um, and I put a little sponsor link if you feel so inclined. Um, but I just wanted to to tell you that this is I'm trying to I'm kind of violating normal commit uh, rules for for messages and using this as a title, which normally is not a thing and get you would do. But I, this is an exceptional. Thing. We're going to talk a lot about how to organize your notes in this way. This is what I, this is what I call a Zettelkasten, uh, a Zettelkasten repo. We're going to talk a lot about that and note taking. I don't want to talk about it right now. Just know that this is where all things are and that are going to be. Everything that's communicated is going to be on here. If there's some uh, notification that I need to tell everybody about, it'll be on here. Um, 
the second most important thing, you know, like writing wise, besides YouTube and Twitch, obviously, is the Google Calendar. So uh, the Google Calendar is linked from uh, the Twitch. Uh, and some of you are on Twitch right now who are not participating. Uh, so there's this calendar right here. That's where this calendar comes from. Uh, on Twitch, it tells you what the time is here, uh, and these are all EDT. You can follow that to tell when it's going to be on. Uh, I do have a little thing here. If you if you if you are tech savvy, uh, this is for beginners, of course. But if you are tech savvy and would prefer not to use Twitch, uh, you can just log into IRC, watch with MPV, and never even log into Twitch. Uh, you have to have a Twitch account uh, to get to the IRC. But other than that, you can do that. If you if that if that you're so we have a couple of people doing that. So I just want to mention that, um, and that would that would make it so you did not have to depend on this. All right, uh, there's like my repos and everything. Anyway, uh, I think I think we covered everything. Let's go back to my own notes. But I think I think we're ready to end this beginning logistics video. Uh, we've talked about how to how to get answers. Oh, a couple other things. Um, any other way that you want to contact me, just in general, is on uh, is on my GitHub. So uh, there. If you go to GitHub slash RWX Rob, um, so if somebody wants to contact me directly, I, I I have a really hard time responding other than through these sessions because just time. I have a you know a full time job and and everything. But if you if you want to try to get a hold of me, there's a Discord server. The raise my link's broken, but um, it, the Discord server link is from there, and you can go ahead and launch Discord and uh, you know do your Discord thing. We have a Discord community that really helps each other out. Uh, I am like never there. I, Quentin was making fun of me. He's like, no, he really never logs in. So I probably won't be able to. But if you want to direct message me, the best way to get me a direct message is either email uh, or Discord. And I will I will get to that as best I can. But I, given the number of people that are here, uh, I can't guarantee that I'm always going to be able to respond to you. But you know, many, many people have made contact through there. There's people who've gotten jobs through meeting different people in the Discord. I'm not kidding. So reach out. We're going to talk about reaching out. It's one of the, it's part of the R in RWX, and we're going to get to that later. So I think I've hit all the logistics for this starting day. Um, so we, we talked about, you know, generally how to chat and communicate. We've talked about how to go to get more help. Uh, we've talked about, oh, the YouTube video. We probably should go there. So youtube.com. Uh, so YouTube is where you can come get, you know, the channel. This is where all the videos are, of course. Uh, and, uh, and this is all of the new videos are the same format. Uh, these unique identifiers down here, uh, are, is all you need. If you, if you, if you happen to be watching the video and you see a unique identifier, uh, you can actually pull that unique identifier and put it into uh, search the search bar. And if, I mean, you can always go by keyword, of course, but if you want, it's, it's kind of hidden here, but if you click right there and you put in that identifier, that will take you to the, exactly to the video uh, if you want to find the video. But you can also, so if basically, if you want to write down the unique identifiers and don't want to have to write down the whole names, like you're taking notes on paper or in your in your however you're doing it, that's one way you can get back to the video. Uh, these are all of these videos are going to be connected to uh, the boost outline here, so you'll be able to click right into the video that goes with it, and those videos will continue to populate as we progress through the outline. The outline will change as we go. We're gonna be adding new videos as we go. We're gonna be removing things as we go. It's very organic, um, and and that that's the reason that I can't tell you exactly. Somebody asked the question, when are you covering C? And I I can't tell you that, you know, because it it's this is roughly going to take you know twelve weeks, but I think it we probably will end up uh you know not hitting that perfectly, and that depends on how much of this this time frame. So the really only thing I can promise you is I'm starting today. <laughs> we'll see how far it goes. I like that. So uh, I think that I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Let's take a breath to breathe, and uh, we'll we'll move on. We'll get we'll get right on into it. Um. Any other questions from the chat that everybody might want to read on YouTube? Hmm. That sounds like no. So uh, thank you for the follows. And um, we're going to go ahead and end this first video right now. All right. So 
technically we're we're off the clock here now. So stop Pomo. Oopsie, Pomo stop. All right. Um, and I I know you guys don't like this, but to keep things consistent, I'm actually going to walk around for like two or three minutes. So I'm going to take five. I'll, I'll tell you right when. So if you need to take a bio break, this is for your purposes too. If you need to take a bio break, there you go. Five shot. We're on it. We have a little bit of a break. What, what you got a question you want to ask? You're welcome to ask questions anytime. I try, if the questions aren't on topic, then and it was not of a smoothie. It was no, but she did make a smoothie. She said she almost brought it into me, but I locked her out. <laughs> I locked her out because she's just so random. She'll come in here all the time. She made kielbasa and sauerkraut too. So, oh yeah, I'm like I'm looking forward to the end of this. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, my wife's very German. She's wonderful. Wonderful. It's great having her. Um, somebody had a question. So another couple of minutes here. This this coffee mug is, it's like a Yeti. It's just completely random. It's actually a gift uh, to my son who, who was teaching at the school that I did there for a while. And I don't know how much personal stuff to put in these booths because I don't want to waste people's time, but... But between breaks here, I guess we can talk about that stuff. Uh, should I keep it public or private on your GitHub README or something else? I should keep yours public or private or mine? Uh, so are you, are you talking about mine or yours? If you're, if you're talking about your GitHub, so, so we're going to get into that later. But the short answer is uh, it depends on what you want people to see. So if you're just starting out, you don't have any good projects in your GitHub, which is fine. You don't want the first project people see to be Hello World. So make it private. That's what I would do. That's up to you, really. Uh, if you are, if if you don't mind, if you, if you have some way to call it out as saying, hey, my code book, learning stuff, I, I am a noob, people will forgive you. I mean, you know, I, I call mine a lab and I'm going to have a lot of things in there about cloud native stuff that I am just learning and I look like a noob and I'm okay with it because I have other stuff in my repos that show that I know stuff. So, but if the only thing you have in your GitHub is just beginner material, I might, from a marketing perspective, I might choose not to make that public. I, I would wait until I had a repo that you could really, you know, punch and put that on your main page. We're going to talk about how to set up your own personal profile on the GitHub and everything. Uh, and then I would put that there. That would be my, my suggestion. And then, and then once that's there, you don't have to highlight the other thing. If they find it, who cares? And really the only reason to make it public is so you can share it with other people. And I, I do think that it's useful to have 
uh, a repo that you can share with others and show them the things that you're learning as you're learning them. Uh, obviously, I've got a lot of that too. So, uh, so that's that's the question there. All right. Um, so we're back. We're back. Uh, and let's go. Let's go back through the. Um, let's go back through the topic here. Oopsie. I have uh, to do some more magic here. Let's figure this out. So I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to use the the web interface just because uh, the links work a little bit better. Um, and uh, all right. So I'm going to make a video about all of these points combined. So that's going to be the next video. We're going to start that here right now. So uh, I'm going to go pretty fast with the video. Uh, you're welcome to ask questions during the video or 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 after okay so uh let me say uh, i'm actually going to change the topic i have a little thing here um what is it uh all right so if you'll notice this is another thing too um this should change the topic uh, as well, it wipes the, the thing and everything. And I need to make it so it puts this up too. Okay, so again, you're welcome to chat if you want. I just cleared it out to start out. Um, all right, so who is the beginner boost for? Um, this this is going to be a really fast video. The beginner boost is basically for anybody who is just starting out in tech, um, and and that's the primary target audience is, is those who are trying to start out in tech, whether it's a tech career or they're retired and they've always wanted to learn something in tech. They'll have had all kinds. Uh, that's who the beginner boost is for. Um, it, that includes, uh, people who have been in technology for a long time, but maybe feel like they missed some of the fundamentals and they want to go back. Uh, that includes, you know, front end people have been kind of ranting about front end lately because it seems like the whole world cares nothing more than about front end when in fact, you know, the core computer, uh, fundamentals are being ignored. So, you know, maybe you want to learn back end or something and you want to do that. So that would be for those people. Uh, and, and that pretty much covers it. So it's, it's, and it's honestly, it's for anybody who wants to learn about Linux, uh, containers and coding. And those are the primary thing. And of course, learning how to learn and the scientific method and all of that kind of stuff that goes with it. Those are all fundamentals that, um, that are listed. And if you go to the boosts, uh, you, links, you can read, there's links here. Uh, so I, I do want to, to back up a little bit and say, read about the prerequisites. Um, so what are the prerequisites? Um, uh, I'll pull this back up from here just so it's easier. I, I want to, you know what, let me zoom this in. Let me zoom this in. So I'm going to, I'm going to use the same things that you guys are probably going to do. I could do it from the terminal, but I would just as soon do it this way so that you guys uh, know where to click and stuff. So it's the same as this is again, this is on our uh, github.com rdbx uh, rob slash boost uh, the prerequisites. So the prerequisites. Yeah. I mean, the, the prerequisites are pretty basic. Uh, before you begin, make sure you know these tech things. You should be able to uh, speak and write basic English. I speak pretty quickly. If that's not you, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I didn't make the rules. <laughs> you know, <laughs> damn those English, right? With their Navy. They made the whole world speak English instead of Dutch or whatever, right? So you got to speak English. Algebraic functions. If you don't know how to do basic algebra, uh, some of the stuff that we're doing is going to be harder for you. Uh, my son and I actually discovered over dinner one night while we were really wondering why, what was so hard for people to learn coding? What was the distinction? And we dealt with young people a lot and we came to agree that those who had had exposure to math first, uh, had a much easier time learning how to code in general. And so if you've done math, algebra, algebraic functions, if you, if you're, if you haven't done any, you know, that's the thing you might want to focus on. Um, in fact, one case, there was a 10 year old who had taught himself uh, math uh, way ahead of the curve. I mean, he should have had to have been, you know, 12 or 14 to be able to do that. So spend some time in math class, make sure you get what functions do. In fact, many terms, uh, strictly speaking, computer science is an extension of mathematics. And so pay attention and that stuff will help you out. Uh, you should be able to type 30 words from home row. And uh, I don't want to skip over this particular point. I do want to give you 
uh, without going too long, I want to give you a few places you can go to practice your typing. A lot of people will be able to help each other out uh, with this, but uh, Nitro Type is actually a really popular one. I have nothing. I'm not. I'm not. I don't have anything to do with these people. Uh, but uh, and Nitro Type is one of the places you can go. Uh, there's the typing test. Uh, typing.com. I mean, it's just a million places you can go to type. There's actually, there's like typing games for people who want to learn how to code. And actually on my wish list, which is on github slash com rwx rob, uh, I'm going to plug my wish list here. If you go to slash wish, uh, I have a number of wishes here. And one of my wishes uh, is, so if you know how to code already and you're just watching this for fun, <laughs> God help you if you are, but if you are, one of my wishes is a terminal typing training game. So uh, all the web tools are lame, <laughs> even though it's designed for coding suck. Uh, they need to be an exciting terminal typing training tool that allows. So if you want to make one, that's good. But but just typing on the terminal and writing is going to be be your mo your best practice because all the coding symbols are on the top row. I still can't hit them as well as I should be able to. Um, so. Typing is a thing that you have to know. There's just no denying that. Um, and then, and from home row, by the way, none of this hunt and peck. If you're hunting and pecking, that's fine. I actually saw a kid. This is this is a true story. It's a fun story. I saw I saw a guy that I was, was teaching. He this is how he typed. He was like fully home row from this hand, and this hand was this. And I was like, how how did that turn out to be? Turned out he was a gamer. And he had really great dexterity in his left hand because he had been doing, you know, WASD for all of his games of Minecraft and stuff. But he had never it developed his right hand home row typing. This is literally, and you should have seen how fast he was. He was on this. He was. It's the craziest thing. Anyway, um, so uh, wait, keyboard.com. Oh, we have another another recommendation here. Let's go look at this one. Uh, yeah, let's go look at that one for sure. Yeah, learn to type faster. Here's another one. Let's go look at this one. Uh, web application to learn to type. Ooh, look at this. this. I didn't know about this. This is why this is so great having a studio audience. Um, and somebody else said monkeytype.com. That's it. Looks that was fun too. So monkey type. This is this is one of the greatest things about doing this in this way because so many people bring to, things to the table that I that I don't even know about. So there's two more things you can try. All right. Back to the requirement. I don't. I'm, I don't want to run over my time. Uh, somebody else got another suggestion. Keyword helped me a lot. Nice guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, so own a computer with admin access. I have to put this because I've taught private school before, and uh, I've had people like delay the whole class like two days because they didn't have admin access to their system to put whatever on there. And that at the time it was VS code that we were using and they couldn't put it on there. So you have to have a computer and you should have admin access on it. You're going to need to install Docker and a bunch of other stuff. And if you don't know how to do that, or you don't know what that is, stop right now or for your homework for the next 24 hours is to figure out how to do that. You, you, you got to have this. You can't do any of what we're going to do without actual access to your computer. Uh, if you're, if your mom or dad need justification, say, Mr. Rob told me I needed to do it. And by the way, don't use your mom's or dad's computer. The Docker containers are going to save us from a lot of mishaps, but it's probably better for you to have a computer that, uh, that, you know, if you do something wrong, no one's going to die. Right. Um, and I mean, some people, I mean, some parents would get really bent out of shape. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. You're yeah, sending words per minute. Awesome. So um, you need to know how to manage your own pass passwords responsibly. And I am not going to spend a, a lot of time talking about this. I've done other videos on this. Uh, people ask me what my method for managing my password is. And I'm just going to tell you, and I'm not going to say anything else about it. I use KeePass XC, but it is rather a complicated password manager for me. Uh, their sessions are recorded. Yes. So uh, KeePassXC.org. This is it. So... Uh, this is my preferred password manager. Everybody's got an opinion on this. Uh, I, I, I don't have anything negative to say about other people's choices except for be sure they haven't been hacked. Uh, there are a couple password manager sites that have been massively hacked. I won't say who, <laughs> but uh, I, I fundamentally disagree with, with storing passwords on any cloud service at all, even though a lot of businesses depend on that. Um, I don't. I, I have my passwords are on a USB stick, and I use a a YubiKey for that. But that's pr 
probably going too far for today. Um, if you want to do that. Yep. There you go. So, um, but honestly, a pa a book, a notebook, a notebook and a piece of pens, uh, a paper, you know, a piece of paper and a pencil is fine. Just be responsible and learn and remember your passwords. The one th I almost made a whole system just for that, for that one thing, because nobody could remember their passwords. The skill stack over eight years, every single time. I'd have adults. I had I had a, a eighteen year old forget his Linux login password. Had to reimage his whole computer. <laughs> don't don't do that. Be responsible. The most important thing that you need to learn in terms of technical responsibility is going to be maintaining your passwords. The one thing that makes you look like a fool more than anything else in the technical realm is having to forget your password or your pin or something. So create a strategy for this. And I'm assuming you have that strategy in place. I'm not going to help you with that. If you forget it, you know, tough beans, you just need to create a system for yourself that you, and I'm not going to tell you what to do. Everybody's got a different system. You come up with your own system, and if you guys want to collaborate in the chat or in the Discord and ask each other what they like and this one or that one, that's fine. But just do it, <laughs> okay? Because we're not going to deal with that. Uh, you need to... Uh, by the way, the best password is a long password, not a complicated password, okay? Let me say that again. The best password is a long password, not a crazy password like a sentence that you'll remember where you may have swapped out some of the letters for numbers. That is the safest password possible. It's counterintuitive, but this most best, the most best password is not limiting it to eight characters and making them all wacky, weird things you can't remember. It's actually not safe to do that. It's safer to make a long passphrase, which is the preferred term I like, uh, that you can remember that's got, that's got stuff in it. Okay. And, and use a different one every place you go. So search bookmarks uh, and browse the web. I mean, this goes without saying, if you're here already, you already know how to search bookmark and browse the web. It's possible that some people are coming, they're watching this on their parents' YouTube or something like that, and they don't really know how to browse the web yet. Uh, yeah, I've dealt with people as young as eight or nine years old who they're just watching videos on an iPad. So if that's you, uh, if that describes you, then you're, you're probably a little young for this particular session, but that's fine as long as you know how to search the web, uh, bookmark it, and browse it. And I'm not going to go into detail. I am going to tell you the search engines that I use. I use DuckDuckGo for searching. Uh, DuckDuckGo.com, which is not as good as the searching, but it's it's not Google. Uh, and sometimes I'll go ahead and use Google. And you'll see me using this a lot of times from the terminal as well. So that's what I do for searching. Uh, people ask me all the time, what web browser do I use? I'm only going to talk to, talk about it now. I'm never going to talk about it again. I use whatever web browser is on the system by default, which means that I'm on a Pop! OS system. I'm using uh, Firefox, which comes with it. Uh, I use I, I use Chrome on occasion and turn this stuff off of it. I use Brave for a long time, uh, despite the controversy. I'd rather not talk a lot about browser wars right now. Uh, actually, believe it or not, I actually kind of like Edge. I've been using Edge at work, uh, which has got a Chromium base. Um, that's way too much information for this intro. Just use whatever browser you want. Just make sure, bottom line, I don't use a graphic browser very much at all. I use a text-based browser, which we're going to get into, and therefore I don't care about my graphic browser because I've done all of the, the you know, privacy violating things that, you know, the tracking is impossible because I'm doing a text browser for that. And then when I get to the actual page I want to see, if there's something graphic on it that I can't see through text, then I pull that page up and I, I bypass all of the concerns that most people have for browsers being spied on and all that other stuff. There's no cookies or anything in a text-based browser. So the, my selection of a text of a, of a graphic browser does not matter as much as it does to other people. All right. Um, where are we? We got... <laughs> we got that. We have, um, okay, you should understand basic network concepts and usage, okay? Uh, we are going to briefly touch on, you know, what's an IP address, but you should know about a URL is. You should know, you know, what lag is. You should know what a ping time is in general. Uh, you should have a general concept of, of how to connect to, to the internet, uh, Wi-Fi, things like that. We're not going to teach you the basics of how to use a network. Um, uh, you really should learn that on your own, though. 
Um, I mean, you should learn how to connect your computer to your Wi-Fi and how to connect your computer maybe through a cable. That is on you to learn how to do that. Uh, we will talk about how the packets fly around and everything and kind of explain some of that. But we're not, I'm not going to tell you, we're not going to go over how to connect your computer to your Wi-Fi, right? So that's assumed. Um, and that's all. That's all we have for Those are all the only technical prerequisites. Um, does anybody else have any... Any suggestions on the technical prerequisites before we close up this video? Um, yeah, it's all funny games to tell you can't log in. Ain't that the truth? And you know what? It happened to me the other day, too. I was logging in to do my hours on PeopleSoft, and I tried for an hour and a half reset my password two times and called into the help desk and found out that they had an outage on the whole system. <laughs> oh, yeah, no one can log in. I'm like, Really? You think you could have put a notification on there instead of wasting an hour of my Saturday? <laughs> I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed by that. All right. That's the end of that video. And we got some time back. Uh, I wish I had a less than five minute. Video. I need to take a five minute break because my voice is going to die on me if I don't. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. Well, during this little break, um, during this little break, I'm going to go ahead and um, whole vods will be available on Twitch for 60 days. Yes. And uh, these when the, the when the tomatoes on, that's a that's a highlighted video that will go on YouTube tomorrow. I have to wait 24 hours to put them up on YouTube to be compliant with Twitch's rules. So. I want to fix this thing now. How much time we got? We got a couple minutes left, right? I want to fix uh, this command really quick. Um, is that ID? This is a little program I have that sets the, the Twitch title. And I want to have it do some other stuff. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, if you want to ask questions, by the way, in the chat and not have them appear in the video, just a reminder that you can put an exclamation point in front of any message and it will not appear in the chat on on the screen. A lot of people fear asking questions and chatting and stuff because they don't want it to be recorded on YouTube. And if you want to ask a question to the chat, you can always put an exclamation point in front of that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow, some great conversation in the back chat. Yeah, some great back chat there. Um, just about done here. I do. We're going to... Uh, you know what? I don't think the Pomodoro technique is, is anywhere in here. Um, give me a second and let's go, let's go see if it's in there and before we start our next video. Uh, I, I don't think... I don't... I don't <laughs> Well, that thank you know that's 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 going, that's going into the uh, the permanent sixty day archive. <laughs> oh my gosh, you people! Um, whatever gets the job done. <laughs> hey Thomas, how's it going, man? Uh. 
uh, da, 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 da. one last thing I want to do here. So Twitter update. Wait, please tell me that's not updating to Twitter. It's not okay. It is not set Twitch title, set GitHub status. Uh, Figgle. I don't think this is happening right now. Hmm. Oh, that's because I cleared the screen. That's why. Oh, I got to remove that. Um. Uh-huh. Put it there, and then we'll do this. All right. <laughs> oh, gosh. You like the tomato... It, it is pretty fun. I actually did a video on that. Um, uh, if it, oh boy, YouTube Q. That video, if, that video will show you how to, if you want to do Pomoda and uh, in your Tmux. So you can eventually add your own for that. All right, let's go look at what's next. What video is next? Uh, I, I do. You, do you guys like this? This this like casual formal casual formal i think that's probably how we're going to do it. It, it the reason for that is you guys were asking when was it going to be time to ask questions well the breaks in between the videos is the time to ask the questions so if you want to immediately ask questions or you want to tell us you have a small penis or whatever you want to do <laughs> i don't care i don't judge just this is the time to do it right and then and then uh and then we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll cover it we'll cover the other stuff during that other time all right, so let's go back to the next thing. Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, that's exact. That's that's where it came from, Puff. Yeah, this is just it. It really fo helped me focus, even though it's a shorter time period. So yeah. Uh, so let's see here. Um, uh, to drink after class, <laughs> you might regret that. <laughs> LTN Bob has drank a beer with me after class before. I, I think, yeah. Uh, I used to have, look, my Pomo is set to 25 right now, but you can change it to any time you want, if you guys want one. When we sit, when we talk about Tmux, you can set up, you can have your own Pomo on your Tmux. We'll have that. I'll show you how to do that. So, um, uh, and then rest for like five minutes. Yeah. All right. Those with, an, with the tough enough skin to learn my way. Um, Uh, all right, so this this is probably not going to take two. It's only take five or ten minutes, but I need to I need to go through the through this. Um, so trying to I'm going to try my new things. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, all right, guys, ready. Now, I should have this mark the video automatically. I wrote that code. It's just not integrated yet. I'll have to do that later. All right. We're going to turn the video on now. Oh, my thing didn't work. Damn it. <laughs> we'll talk about it in a bit. How I do things. All right. Okay. How I do things. Uh... I know, the Pomodoro, by the way, uh, ac doc doc d is this thing down here, and that means we're live. That means you're 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 being recorded for for everyone to see. In case you're wondering, uh, how I do things. This is a question I have to cover early on. I know I'm gonna. There's a lot of this stuff. You're like, can we get to coding? Yes, but I, I just want to make sure you you understand these things about me, so that we don't end up mad at each other or misunderstanding and and god knows i have um uh I, I mean we're not gonna talk about politics here at all during the boost uh if you come during another time uh you might catch us in a middle of a, a political conversation and i might call you a moron for voting for a particular person i'm not a good person i'm just gonna tell you right now i i make mistakes all the time on my live stream uh and and i i've been known to have a temper uh but, but that said, let's get to the part where you matter, what, what matters to you. So this is how 
I do things. Somebody was joking about I was the kind of teacher you'd have a beer with after. And that's true, I, I, you know, but, you know, you might regret it. <laughs> it just depends. So uh, I, I am a very informal guy. Uh, in my private time, I actually have to, I used to have to usually tell people this when I would, I would interview uh, parents and their children uh, before they got admitted to my school. Uh, I don't like calling it a school because reasons, uh, skill stack, I ran it for years. And uh, this is the extension of that, by the way. And, um, and at the, I would have these interviews and at the end of the interview, I would tell the, the, the parents, and I live in the South right now, I would say, uh, I just want to let you know that if you run into any of my content online, uh, there's a good chance you're going to run into an F-bomb and some swear words and, and me yelling at people. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm generally a jolly guy, but, but when that came up, I was like, you just, I'm a human being. I choose not to live a double life like many other teachers do. Uh, I'm just me. And that means you're going to get unfiltered Rob, uh, literally on my live streams a lot of time. I mean, there's video of me dancing and all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, not drunk, by the way, that video of me dancing was not me drunk. Um, but you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. And, and, and you just need to know that, that, and if that's not what you're okay with, then that's fine. I actually had one parent say th there was, there was th this one group that I was saying that to the, the mother's jaw dropped to the floor. She was like, and the dad was like behind her out of sight. And he was like snickering to himself. <laughs> it said so much about them. I was like, okay, you can stay here. <laughs> and it, it was just really funny because everybody has different sensibilities about this thing, about this. So uh, I, I, I wasn't even going to bring that up, but that's something about me that you should know. However, there's a few times when it, I'll, I'll, I'll put you, I'll, I'll put you against the wall. Uh, so if, uh, if I'm going to jump all the way to six here, if I have no patience for intellectual laziness, let me give you, let me give you some things right now. You can probably make fun of me after this that will instantly get some sort of like snide remark for me asking me what time it is <laughs> when it's right there on the screen asking me things like oh you know what's my schedule when it's in my twitch chat you know asking me what do i do for a job when it's literally in my title you know if you don't even lift a finger to do a minimal amount of research and 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 searching on your own you're going to get flack from me and you're going to get flack from me you're going to get it from everybody in my community because we have no patience for people who are intellectually lazy who don't want to just do a tiny little search for themselves to answer their own questions you know the type of person and we're going to talk about it later the type of person who if you were in a cubicle we're not anymore but if they were they would come to you and ask you a question they could have answered in two seconds if they'd search for it okay this if i snap at you because of that it's not it's not because I don't like you. It's because I want to protect you from other people who will do way more than snap at you. And they will silently judge you and withhold job opportunities and all kinds of stuff. Uh, because if you if if you don't do that and you walk into an IRC chat room with a bunch of, you know, people and you ask a question that could easily be answered anywhere else, you will get destroyed if not banned. So I'm trying to help you here. And, and, and if it hurts because I'm short with you, it's because I want it to hurt because I want it to hurt enough for you to remember it, uh, so that you won't be made fun of, uh, later, uh, RTFM in real life. Yeah, it is RTFM. RTFM stands for read the freaking manual. Uh, and so many people just don't do that, right? They don't even bother uh, what's Google, <laughs> right? So I, I, this, this is some things you need to know about me. So if, if I, well, I'm just asking a question, you know, I, well, I'm just trying to help you, you know, and, and, and that's what's up. I guarantee you that even though I said that, like immediately after this video is over, somebody who's not trolling me will ask me some question about this and they'll say, well, you know, what's up? So another thing that's that's kind of rude is that I play the fool as Socrates did. So Socrates very famously didn't believe in written a word. Actually, he did everything vocally. It was Plato and every and Aristotle who wrote everything down, and they would have the time. <laughs> and Socrates, uh, Socrates is really awesome because he would walk around and he would deliberately. Uh, yeah, actually, I if. Here's what I do for that. If, if you ask me a question, this is what you're going to get. 
So go duck yourself, Socrates. Uh, play the fool. So sometimes I'll give you this. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll say, fack it. <laughs> I have another one. That's, I, I used to be fack off, and now it's fack it. It's like, you know, stuff you can read about me in the FAQ and stuff like that. So, you know, I have fun with it. I, I, I don't mean anything... I don't mean anything personal, I swear to God. Now, playing the fool can sometimes get people pissed off, but that was on purpose. Uh, Socrates did that on purpose. What he would do, and I really encourage you, there, there's a really great video on this, and I'm, running, I'm kind of running long on my time here. Um, there's a really great video uh, called uh, Great Minds of the Ancient World, I think it is. It's a Netflix video, it's a, it's a documentary, and one of the people they talk about is Socrates, and I cannot recommend it enough. It is a really amazing. Um, uh, it is just a really amazing summary uh, in the, you know in the streets of Greece about probably the most important thinker of our time. Uh, there were a lot. Of, they also cover uh, Confucius and some. Um, uh, what is it? Confucius and the Buddha. So it's it's a great. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and so. Playing the fool is, is Socrates' way of infuriating you by asking you back a question and getting you to answer your own questions and answer your own questions and and causing you to like, you know, di sort of dissect your own thinking so that you became an independent thinker. And it's annoying. It's annoying. And first time you start doing it, you're like, why are you being so mean to me? You know, why can't you just tell me you're my teacher? And this is this is the antithesis of, of, Soc of Socratic thinking. The antithesis of Socratic thinking is this stuff, and we're going to talk about this, Paulo Freire talks about this, is is banker-style education. That instead of, instead of Socrates playing the fool and getting you to answer your own questions, uh, banker-style education is is sit there and listen to what I tell you and you tell me sir and ma'am and I will tell you what you're going to learn and I'm going to open your head and deposit into your brain and you're going to learn it or you're going to like it. And so that's the oppressive education system that we live in today. Uh, we're going to talk all about that in this first week. But so the Socratic method is the exact opposite. It puts all the responsibility for answering your questions and doing your own learning on you. And, and, and that actually, to someone who's been used to the oppressive style, comes off as the teacher doesn't know what they're doing. It's like, what do you mean? Why are you asking me to do this? Can't you just tell me how to do it? I certainly can. I'm not going to. But I, I, that my, my role is to get you to become a standalone, independent person. We're going to talk a lot about that. But I have to put it there because as soon as I do it to people, they're like, well, what? You don't know what you're talking about? Or are you just being mean? Or what's the deal here? Are you trolling me? So that's what's going on. And if you, they do this in, in higher level universities, sometimes they'll do it. Um, just just to, that's what's up. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, New Gen gets everything handed. So why they just don't Google search research first? Just my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, we do stuff the hard way, so we don't do stuff with shortcuts. Uh, I'm going to make you do your own research and figure it out. I'm going to make you ask the question, which of the following is the best way instead of tell me what to do, All right? I'm going to give you my opinion based on my own research, and, and a lot of times I'll change my opinion based on research you'll bring to the table through the whole community, and that's what learning's about. Um, it's not about being told what to do. And we're going to, so we'll come back to that, but the hard way, so the hard way usually means, you know, failing a lot and figuring it out. Uh, I, I've, I've kind of co-opted this word. I believe I'm the first human in history to use the word zettel casting. Uh, my zettel casting is this method you're seeing me do right now. It's kind of a combination of it's a Pomodoro method, which is like, you know, short time segments that are based on a specific topic and they're really free form. They have very little structure to them, but each slip zettel stands for slip, which we'll talk about. Um, is, is kind of self-encapsulated and it's a nice little, you know, bit of video or written word that can be moved around and reorganized in kind of a mind map fashion. And that's, that's Zettelkasten. Uh, Zettelkasten stands for slip box. It's a, a method invented by uh, Nicholas Luhmann in uh, the early 1900s, which we're going to talk about a lot. This is what you're seeing me do uh, to not to manage my knowledge and to share it in a way that's easily searchable uh, and very you know out of the way when it comes to creating your notes. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about all of that. But but that's my method. That's how I do things. If you're wondering why there's a bunch of identifiers there and everything, uh, why I'm not using a website, all of that. That's why that's happening. And 
the live coding of conversation on Twitch. So during the day, uh, if you want to come to my channel during the day, uh, lately I've been putting on music. Um, I don't always do that, but I've just been like the ASCII Aquarium and I'm just doing my day job and coming by and just listening to the chat and having random conversations. So you can, you can do that in Discord too, but if you just want to come by the channel and just hang out with us in the chat, uh, our water cooler is always there. Um, I'm usually doing cloud native Kubernetes work uh, for a large company that I can't tell you. Uh, if you do know, please don't tell, don't dox me. Uh, they may not like that. Um, but yeah, and I'm, I'm currently, I'm setting up Jupyter hub, uh, for, uh, 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 you know, multi-user environment in, uh, in, in our Kubernetes cluster. So if you're those, that's how I do things. That's what I'm doing during the day. If you're interested in what I do for a living and all that, um, you can come on by, uh, I I've actually been putting Spotify music on. So, uh, in the background. So if you do like, it's, it's not always going to be the same music. I will try to mix it up. I should probably mention that I do have a Spotify link in my Twitch. So if you want to, if you've seen a song there and you don't know, you want to go, you want to find that out, that's where you can go get that song. Uh, yeah. And there's always a group of people around the chat. In fact, I've got my current, this is no lie. I got my current job from Twitch. That is not an exaggeration. I, my current job I got it through a contact I made by live streaming on Twitch. True story, true story. And uh, and I didn't have to search at all for any other jobs. Yeah, and it wasn't a Twitch job. It was somebody that I met through Twitch. He may or may not be here right now, uh, but it was somebody that I met through Twitch. Actually, became be very. You probably see him. Uh, and he and now are, are where this person, this acquaintance I made through Twitch, who helped me with my RC and everything, is now my coworker. <laughs> that I deal with every day in stand-up meetings. It's an absolute miracle. I love it. Uh, there are lots of job opportunities that come up here. Uh, there's another opportunity that I had that I, I met with a person. So had, this is one of the reasons that I, I, I mentioned this live coding and conversation and this kind of water cooler atmosphere because uh, somebody, I, I haven't mentioned it in a while, but somebody once said, wow, it's like there's a bunch of grandpas and babies in here. And, and I kind of like that term because that's what it is. There's a lot of veterans that are learning from people that are younger who are bringing new things to the table. And for me, that's containers. I'm very new to containers and, and Kubernetes and cloud native, even though it's my job now. And uh, and there's a lot of people from the old guard who can who can share, you know, how to use VI properly and and stuff like that. And and kind of you know why BSC matters and things like that. Like uh, Dennis, you know, God bless him. I, I miss him immensely. Uh, Dennis is another Twitch streamer. I mean, we haven't heard from him for a long time. I hope he's okay. Um, but the point being is that there's a lot of cross pollination, and that includes uh, we've had one or more hiring managers in the chat. So, and I actually have direct contact with an SRE recruiter who regularly asks me for new names. So I can't promise you a job, but I can tell you that by staying connected with our community. That is how jobs happen. It's not happened by J Dennis. Yeah, uh, jobs don't happen by cold calling people and spamming resumes. Jobs happen by producing trust with people that you know already and getting referrals from people who know your work and your personality. That's how most jobs happen. So that's something that can happen here. That's why I do low co live coding and conversation on Twitch. So that explains why I'm talking about that first point. Uh, other than that, I mean, everything else you might want to know about me, uh, I, 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 there's links to it in my, in my Twitch, uh, during the boost, I promise to not really, really divert into, uh, personal storytelling and stuff like that. Um, on the weekend is your most likely chance to hear me tell a story that may or may not be saved for time and eternity on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, I've told some pretty doozy stories, uh, but I'm not, I, I'm going to try to keep that out of this kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep my stories relevant. I, I don't, I've, I've been around a while, so, you know, I've got stories, but I'm going to try to keep them relevant as much as I can. And speaking of which, uh, we're going to get, uh, to a relevant story here pretty soon when we start talking about, um, uh, learning how to learn. Uh, I, there's some stories coming up. I'll talk to you some of my experiences about how I learned. So that's the end of this video. Any other questions? We're going to take another Zettel break, five minute break. Hopefully those marks are going through. All right, so we're going to do uh, fundamentals. Uh, 
Uh, I need to do a quick video on what the fundamental, this is going to be really quick. It's going to be really, really quick. So, and, and, and we're going to get that. That one's going to be really quick, but let's just do take a break though. I think I probably need to save the life stories for Sundays because they're just too distracting from everything else. <laughs> you know, like when I put the beach on in the background, you know what though? I, it's funny because I, I've, I've, here, let me start my break timer before I get, I'm, I'm, I'm being casual now. So, um, yeah, back, back at 8:12. Oh, is he active on YouTube now? Is he streaming? Is he streaming to YouTube? That's good to know. We had somebody in here who was really, really, that was really, really afraid. Uh, Hunter's Hunter Mug favorite anime. <laughs> uh, I like Hunter Mug. Yeah. Um, that uh, I, I, to be completely honest, my favorite anime. Uh, I I don't know. I I'm a sucker. I, it's really mainstream. You're gonna think I'm such a noob. So first of all, my stepson who's Chinese is the only source of anime. The first anime I ever saw was. Um, I used to get up at like 5 a.m. to watch, I think it was Starship Troopers. And of course, every day at 4 p.m. was was G-Force. And I mean, we're talking old school anime, man. Old school Americanized anime. Um, those are the first, I have the best memories of watching G-Force as a kid. In fact, I made, as a little kid, I made a, a G-Force like wings. <laughs> it's a really little kid. And I was obsessed. I was obsessed with G-Force for a really long time i mean if if, if you're talking about and uh, and but the other anime my, i i i like some, some of the more edgy anime i uh that i really i the, the one that i'm just kind of embarrassed to admit that i really love is i i i really love one punch man i think one punch man is probably my all-time favorite anime <laughs> i just i love everything about it i i like how tongue-in-cheek it is uh, I just really, really love it. I like how well the first season, the second season sucked. The animation, they got somebody else. Uh, Barefoot Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Attack on Titan. Everybody loves Attack on Titan. I was going to say Attack on Titan is the one that I detest. I cannot stand Attack on Titan. I hate it. I hate it. Uh, I like... Um, uh, there's a couple of those. I can't remember the name. What's the one... What's the one that has the Yakuza in Japan? They almost all do, right? Um, there's there's one where they there's what's the one that's that's the take on the old Scottish? God, I have to ask Otto what the names of these are. I'm gonna have to go do my research because I've just seen them. I can't remember the names. Uh, I, I like the one with the high school one. No, there's uh. No, it's 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 rah 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 or something. Full Metal Alchemist, yeah, of course. Full Metal Alchemist is really awesome. I love Full Metal Alchemist too. Yeah, I couldn't get through it either. Uh, I, I actually, I actually, uh, uh, I actually liked Nar the first season of Naruto for a while. Rah rah rah, do rah 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 rah. What is that one called? Do you guys know what it is? It's about it's it's basically a retake on a Scott. It's the strangest thing. It's just retake. Yeah, do rah 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 rah. That's the one. Do you know it? Yeah, no, it's do rah, 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 yeah, and I and I didn't get to finish that one either. I got most of the way through it, and I was like, "This is amazing." Yeah, um, and um, watch raw, raw said yes, I know. <laughs> there's another one. There's another one where uh, everybody had a a sort of spirit. That could turn into a weapon. What is that one? You guys remember that one? There's one where everybody could had a spirit, and the spirit would would turn into a weapon, and the 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 one weapon was like a scythe, not Pokemon. No, 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 no. Uh, Soul Eater. Yes, Soul Eater. That's it. Spirited Away is another one. It was Soul Eater. It was definitely Soul Eater. Yeah, yeah. Soul Eater got got under my skin too. I love that one too. Again, I would not know about any of these. My, they're watching Demon Slayer right now and Goblin King. I can't Goblin King, Goblin King and Demon Slayer are like so gory. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot get into them. They, they, yeah. 
they get really into them. My, my stepson really loves them. So uh, there was there was another one. I mean, I don't know. I, I've watched so, little bits and pieces of so many different ones, but I got to tell you those. Um, I, I think, yeah, I, One Punch Man, I, I, I could watch that first season like a thousand times. I love it. I just, it's just so funny to me. That whole show is so funny. My, my, uh, my stepson actually started doing the, the one punch man workout. You guys know that we got to go back here, but do you guys know the one punch man workout? Who knows it? Who knows the one punch man workout? Anybody know it? (laughs) There's a word. Oh yeah. There's like, there's like a one punch man workout. Yep. There it goes. (laughs) 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and a 10K run. Yeah. 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and a 10K run every day. No, he doesn't do it. No, he started it. He was working on it. You don't have to do them all at the same time. You can do the push-ups all through the day. So, ball from the training. Yeah, totally. That's totally, totally. That's like canon. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, squats, 100 squats. That was it. 100 squats, uh 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups. You know what though? You know what's funny? Um so the true story, true story, and we'll get back to the lesson. So, uh true story, there was um what's the guy who plays Trump on Saturday night live? What's his name? I know the run, the run would be hard. If you I think if you just walk 10,000 steps every day as a replacement for that, you'd be fine. That's 5 miles. Baldwin. Yeah. Baldwin the uh, the other guy, the guy that was dating, the guy that was dating, uh, what's her face? That gorgeous, gorgeous singer, probably the most beautiful woman I've ever seen, uh, in terms of like traditional beauty. What's her name? Uh, oh God, she, uh, the other the other guy, the skinny guy. God, what's his name? He was dating. He was dating the singer chick. Not Gaga. Um, why am I blanking on this? Because we're talking about coding. Uh, not traditional. Ca- no, she's. Um, I can't. I can't remember who she is now. She always puts her hair back and she puts it up high and right here. P. Davidson and P. Davidson was was dating what's her face for a while. The girl. Anyway, I was trying to just get to the name of P. Davidson. So this is so this is a hundred push-ups thing. Okay, so this is related, and then we'll get back to work here. So P. Davidson. Maximum gains. Oh, you found it. 10K lines of code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wooden dev. That's quotable. That's quotable. Yeah, Ariana Grande. So, true story. Uh, my wife was telling me, like Gwyneth Paltrow, she's cute too, but she's kind of weird. So, Pete Davidson told a story uh, in an interview about Baldwin went to him because he saw him with his shirt off. True story. Baldwin saw Pete Davidson without his shirt on, and the guy's apparently ripped. And, and and Pete Davidson just to mess with him, he said, Baldwin's like, "How did you get so?" Because Baldwin was kind of pudgy; he's over fifty, like me, you know. And he he, he said to Pete Davidson, he "Goes, how did you how did you get so ripped?" He said, "He goes," and Davidson said, "Well, you know, I felt like telling him I'm not over fifty, <laughs> but instead I said, I just do 100 push-ups a day, and." So no kidding, Baldwin started doing 100 push-ups a day every day. It's a true story, and he ended up getting totally ripped because. And and Davidson told him later, he goes, "I was just messing with you, dude. I just thought it'd be funny." And he actually did it every day. And of course, Baldwin's you know wife is that famous famous yoga person. Uh, so I, that's a fun story. I mean, it's related to the whole 100 push-ups a day thing. If you if you spread 100 push-ups a day through the whole day. I mean, that's a pretty good workout. I think you might end up with screwing your shoulders up if you're my age, but, you know, be careful. With it. Yoga is the way to go, if you ask me. All right. Well, I, we won't have anything about yoga here. We probably should, though. Um, uh, yoga is a really important thing. Moving your body is how you stay healthy in many ways. All right, let's go back. What should we do next? We do the next thing. I, I know this is this is kind of just a, a lightweight first day. Uh, uh, that's just to be expected. Um, so, uh, so let's go through here. Um, let's continue encoding. Okay, we're gonna do that next. Uh, 
this is going to be a really fast video because what are the technology fundamentals? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost kind of, it's kind of lame, but we're going to do it. Uh, I, I started do, I was going to do yoga, uh, stream at one point. I was really seriously starting to do, I was going to start it like Sunday mornings and I just could not maintain the schedule. It was too hard. I really, really want to do that. It would be like, it would be like pudgy old guy yoga. So everybody could keep up. <laughs> But I want I want my picture back. The picture in my in my profile. That's the picture I want back. Uh, what happened to Art of X Yoga? We were gonna do Art of X Yoga, and I just could not maintain the schedule. It might come back. Who knows? You know, I did it. I've been doing yoga every day for the last three weeks now, two weeks, and uh, it's really helping. But the pollen is really messing me up right now. So uh, we should do stretch breaks. Well, that's what that's what that five minute thing is all about. So hopefully you guys will. Sometimes when I take a break, I'll go in the other room and do a sun salutation or something. And I did do a video on sun salutations. So if you want to do that, yeah. Uh, or uh, maybe one of these. And that that's the one that's on yoga. I did do one. Uh, it talks about yoga for coders, and I just go through a basic movement that just activates your your you're, it's, if you want to stretch, you want to get a good stretch, not only stretching, but one of the important things to do is to invert your head so you can increase the blood flow back to your brain because your brain needs more blood and stuff, right? When you just sit here, blood just pools everywhere and it doesn't go around. Your legs get cold and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, yeah. And so actually just basic sun salutations are one of the best things that a coder could do. And I actually just linked to that. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm going to make an extra video there. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, where, where should we put that? I guess, um, I, I don't know where we could link that to. I, if I can find a place for that. We could put that in there. Where should we put that? Let me just give me a second here. Maybe I can add it someplace. Where does it make sense to put it? Um, how I do things, uh, yoga for coders. How about that? No. Learn how to learn. Nope. Uh, from tonight, not going to lie. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know where I would put it, I really don't, so, I don't know, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I can't, I, I can't justify putting it anywhere in the boost, um, I, I don't know, let's, 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 uh, healthy uh i mean we don't have to talk about it a lot you know what i mean it's just like um where's my how i uh i'm gonna change this to say those uh willing to learn my way you know what let's put the yoga under there is this is why i did this this way because it's really organic i don't have to publish a website i can just change it right away um, so which one is that, by the way? Uh, how, let's see, get grab dash I, how, how, let's see, I don't know how to learn how I do think, I think it's in the mazette. Okay, guys, thanks for being patient. Um, How? There it is. See, the thing that's great about this, this is something I started doing um, from the skill stack. I would actually work on the content while I was here. Um, coders. Um, All right, so there uh, now there it is. Now it's now it's saved, so I, I won't lose it. I'll go back and put some stuff in there. It does. It totally does. It releases your dopamine levels. It gets you it, better for your eyes because you can go out and look at some stuff. So you know what? Let's actually do a video about it because we talked about it kind of organically, and um, that is sort of related to, to what we're doing here. Um, um so. 
Well, I already have a video for it, so I don't need to do that. I'll just I'll just tack that video onto the other one. So does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think we got it. All right. Uh, okay. So where are we? I'm gonna do another video on technical fundamentals, and and we'll talk about that. We have about a half an hour left for today. I know this first week is is week zero, so or you know day zero. Um, so I'm gonna go change the topic to uh. Um, what are, uh, uh, and chat thing that goes in your screen. Uh, well, we'll, we'll talk, I can talk about that too. Let's, if you want to talk about it during the break, but there's lots of videos on that. Actually, that's in the fac. Mm -hmm. If you go, uh, if you go to the fac and say question, uh, uh, chat. So that will probably give you the, the answer you want. Make sure you click on the number uh, when you get that, and you'll see the whole file. So, um, so yeah, let's see. Um, and what was I doing? Oh, yeah, title. Let's say, what are the fundamentals? Um, I don't know why it doesn't do this. Okay. All right. So we're going to start one here. Uh, what are the fundamentals? Uh, to me, the fundamentals are the stuff that you can do with your computer without having an internet connection. Um, and this is something I, I regularly complain about. Uh, the reason that we're covering the question about what are the fundamentals is because part of the beginning the beginning of the beginner boost is figuring out who this is for. And one of the answers to that is people who may not have learned the fundamentals but are already technologists employed in great jobs. And frankly, a lot of them are in the front end technology world. Uh, and that would have, uh, it, it, to some degree, included me. I mean, I, I learned uh, you know, to code in basic when I was a kid. And then, you know, and then I kind of moved away from computers and then the internet happened and I thought that was really great. And I learned HTML and front end stuff. And then someone told me to learn Perl because it was going to get me a job. And I actually called up an internet service provider and said, what's the number one thing I should learn? And they said, Perl, I learned it in 21 days, quit my job as a Russian cruise director and worked for an internet service provider in Oregon. And off I went. Um, and at the time, uh, because they told me to learn Perl and some of that stuff, I ended up learning what I consider to be the fundamentals. And and they, they didn't have anything to do with the internet. Uh, the fundamentals to me are all of the things your computer was originally intended to do. The reason it's called a computer is because the people who invented computers needed to compute. They needed calculations. They needed things that cost them $100 an hour. The reason VisiCalc was, you know, the most popular software in history uh, when it first came out was because all of these accountants were paying hundreds of dollars an hour for mainframe access to calculate their spreadsheets. And so computers, you know, and then the, 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 the process uh, tables for, you know, astrophysics and, 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 and geology that, you know, Babbage, that's the way he made the original mechanical computer. And you, know, you can go on and on, you know, um, uh, the you know, railroad companies, the census, I mean, I'm reading the innovators, which is a great book, which we'll talk about. And it has a lot of examples of these original uses for computers. And the reason I bring it up is because I really believe that computers have, I, I wrote a, uh, a recent sort of Zettelkast and post about this, but computers have become our entertainment sources. And we've, they're like the television or a gaming system. We've forgotten that they are fundamentally tools that have been designed to help us uh, do arguably more productive things with our time. And so I believe that's the fundamentals, learning how to compute on your computer. And that means doing it without the internet. I, I, I love the internet, and we God knows we need it. Uh, Sun Microsystems went so far at one point in the 90s to say the network is the computer, and I think that's absolute BS. The computer is the computer. 
and and there's some value in respecting the original inventors of the computer and learning how to use that part of the computer. Well, okay, so what does that have to do with, you know, learning the fundamentals? And what does it have to do with the beginner boost? Well, the, the fundamentals, therefore, are learning how to do computations, learning how to use a computer at the lowest level, learning how your computer works, you know, understanding what a CPU is, what the memory is, how many CPUs have, what's a core, uh, you know, how does, how do I interact with the computer without all of this graphic stuff in the way? How can I get to the true power of the computer underneath the hood and all this pretty stuff that Steve Jobs and Smalltalk and, and, and Engelbart added, you know, to give us the graphic user interface, which is fine. But from the beginning of the graphic user interface, we have tended to look at computers as sort of, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking at, like your toaster, <laughs> you know, like an appliance, your computer is an appliance, and it's not so much, you know, a, a tool for computing. And, and I really think that that a lot of us have skipped over uh, learning how to use a computer in that way. And that means learning the command line. It means learning the terminal. It means learning an operating system that is closer to the hardware than any other operating system. And I'm speaking of Linux or BSD or Unix or any of these things. These are operating systems that the mainstream doesn't know about. Yet it runs most of all of the stuff that they use every day is being run on Unix systems, Unix and Linux systems, and they could barely even tell, even streetlights and everything. And yet we still fundamentally don't understand how all those things are happening. So I believe the fundamentals are understanding your computer from as close to the hardware as possible uh, without going too deeply into it and learning like assembly. I would love to teach assembly to beginners. Uh, but I, so I think we, we need to learn things like we need to learn the terminal first. We need to learn, um, you know, shell scripting so we can immediately benefit from, you know, small, easy commands such as, oh, I don't know, you know, you want to do some math calculation. Well, you could be in the middle of editing a file and just need to do some math. Now, uh, plus, you know, 45 times 4.4, you know, scale equals, equals three. You know, and I can send that to BC and I have my, oops, and I, I should have a calculation if I didn't screw this up. Did I screw it up? I don't know. You're going to see I'm doing this live. Did I make a syntax error? What did I do wrong, guys? <laughs> I'm trying to send it to my calculator. There we go. I don't know why it's not doing it. <laughs> of course, I, I, I'm not going to clip that out. I'm just doing the Mr. Rogers thing. Should we start with something easier? <laughs> All right, so let's do... Oh, uh, you know what I did? Oh, my God, I feel so embarrassed now. I was sending it to Bash. I was sending it to Bash and not BC. Yeah, I was. So 5 plus 45... 45, 45. I mean, you know, it's, something, it's just something stupid. All right, so scale equals 2. I was, I, I'm was. i being very off BC. Well, maybe not. I'll have to put that out. Why is it not doing it? It's driving me crazy. BC is a calculator that's built in, and I'm just sending the code to the calculator. But for some reason, it's just not having it. <laughs> that, I might have to cut that part out of the video. Did I not do it that way? It's supposed to be... Oh, you know why? There we go. All right, scale equals two yeah i'm sorry i didn't have the blank line after it so it didn't know it didn't know what to do now it now it can't do it bc is at the point no i'm trying to send the current line to bc i had i had an error again <laughs> i'm leaving it in i'm leaving it in i'm leaving all this foolish in here maybe let's let's go back to a simpler calculation I'm, I'm, I'm like spacing on something. There we go. There we go. So anyway, I mean, other things do. I mean, there's just like all kinds of little things you could do for I in, uh, let's say zero, four to 10, uh, do echo. Hi there. Uh, number I, uh, done. And whoops. And I mean, I'm doing this all live, so watch it not work. 
<laughs> so I can write a little program and I can have that come out and actually do what I had it do. So stuff like that. I mean, yeah, just anything. I mean, there's so many things you can do from the command line and the terminal that are so powerful that this is why, you know, scientists and everybody like to use it. But, but I don't think you have to be a scientist to be interested in using the terminal and getting, getting, uh, getting started up. Yes, this is bash. Thank you, uh, pardon our senior for that, for helping me through that struggle. Uh, BC is a, is a built-in calculator that comes with your system and Linux and everything. The point I'm just trying to make is that that is all of this stuff is stuff that I consider fundamental, uh, and that, you know, people are consider fundamental learning web development now. And I don't necessarily believe that that's the case. I do think learning how to use the internet for communication or networked computers for communication is, is the next most important thing. Uh, and so, you know, knowing how to send email and all those things are all fundamental as well. Uh, but I believe they include these days, they include learning things like GitHub and GitHub. And we're going to talk about those essential services next. So, uh, like it or not, I'm going to leave all of that, um, that stuff in there. <laughs> uh, but the takeaway is the fundamentals are the things that your computer can do without a connection to the internet. Uh, and then if you have a connection to the internet, the, the things that you, that allow you to do to communicate, uh, over the internet with different things, but that includes computing, teaching, learning how to compute, to communicate, uh, how to take notes, how to, how to, um, use it as a tool, how to use a computer as a tool. And that means learning the command line. And it usually means learning an operating system besides, uh, you know, Windows or Mac, even though if you, you can use those as a tool as well. You just have to know how to get get to the power, which is which is underneath all the, the fancy um, icing and stuff that they put around that. All right, so I'm going to end that video. And so that's what the, those are about. What else we got here? Um, I feel like I didn't get the break last time, so I'm going to go ahead and take that. 8.39. We could probably fit another couple of videos in here. I want to get through all this beginner stuff. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, I don't know where we can skip that. I, I talked about that already enough. We talked about terminals and containers. Um, let's talk about setting up essential services. And I'm not going to tell you how to get these services. I just wanted to go ahead and make one video about how to get these and why they're needed. Uh, it doesn't do the trick you wanted to show off. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's actually BC that was messing me up. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I, I should be fine. I don't understand. So scale equals two. I think it has to be on a separate line. I think that was the problem. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I, I'm pretty sure it's because I forgot the semicolon. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it was it was a semicolon I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to cut that out and and like replace that and put that in there is that possible can you do that <laughs> I don't think you can do that uh times 1.6 there you go so quit uh forgetting the semicolon I know it's really powerful unless you forget the semicolon. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna uh, here. Yeah, I'll I'll put I'll put that in. I'll put the after the after the this semicolon thing is kinda like at the end of it. <laughs> People are like, oh that's it. I forgot the semicolon. Yeah. Uh so I mean I'm doing it fast, that's why I miss it. <sighs> Wait, where did my my break go? Fundamentals, semicolon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exact them all. I'll take a fiber a fiber. Uh air online eighteen fifty seven. <laughs> I know. I was like, really? If you don't put scale in there, you don't get the decimal. That's why it said zero. When I was doing the division, it did, it did zero truncating truncation division, which is even worse, right? Truncating division is like the death of people. They think it's going to do the division and they get a zero. They don't even get like a round error. So, yeah, it's like super scary and annoying. 
Uh, I'm actually going to go walk around for a bit, take my own advice. I'll be back in a bit. A script to do what? What, the titles? What are you guys asking? <laughs> um, Figlet, yep. It's called Figlet. It's Figlet, yeah. It's just Figlet. Yeah, there's different ones too. You can do um, um, so here's the oh by the way, so that specific one is right there. So that's the link to the actual script if you want to look at it. And um, that's in my my fact actually. So uh, that uh, that'll give you the actual name of, of how I set my faucet. Mm -hmm. If you want to go look at that. How much time I got? 841. Um, and yeah, so yeah, it's it's pretty fun. Um, this is pretty pretty cool. This this uh, traps the, the, the control C, the cancel, so it clears your screen and hides your cursor. And um, yeah, it just writes it out. I still have this this 